Hello YouTube, um, a video uh, with an idea that someone else came up with and has implemented in the house. Now I haven't got any pictures of what they've done, um, but they have um, a multitude of solar panels fitted their house. They've got 16 off uh, on grid, uh, providing power throughout the day and obviously through net metering they earn money back. And cancel out some of their loads um, but the interesting point is that they've got eight 230 watt panels off-grid uh, on eight 110 amp hour deep cycle batteries and uh, what they've done is they've removed their lighting circuits from their uh, uh, consumer unit their fuse board and um, changed it into a 12 volt lighting system now um, you see uh, where's my lighting circuits can't see them there we go. Upstairs lighting, downstairs sockets, uh, lighting bathroom, and over the other side it's downstairs lighting. And that's protected uh, at the moment by obviously an MCB and an RCD, as uh, we have to do that in this country now. Um, I won't go into the ins and outs. Um, but basically, he's removed the uh, cables uh, from the fuse board, and I'm assuming he's put them into another box. I don't know where he's got his batteries, but if he had them under the stairs, um, I, I could see problems unless they're sealed uh, with uh, the gases venting. Um, and they're quite corrosive as well. Uh, so basically, so my take on it is, you remove the cables from the fuse board, terminate them into another box, you have a 12 volt supply, actually he has a 48 volt supply, and he used a uh, solid state um, buck converter to drop it down from 48 volts to 12.4 volts. Now in this country, uh, our lighting circuits tend to be on a, a 1 mil or a 1.5 mil twin and earth. And this is uh, the twin and earth. As you can see, twin and an earth in the centre. You can see better if I flip it over. Red positive back negative or live and neutral um, and bare earth uh, the colours have changed now, it is now brown for live or positive and blue for negative or neutral um, and still keeping the bare earth bare earth is normally sleeved with green and yellow sleeving so what problems do we have with uh, doing this? I mean Obviously you need to fuse the lighting circuit accordingly and uh, a one mil twin earth can take well, you, subject to conditions in the, in the house and whether it needs to be derated or not for various other things such as insulation and grouping for thermal values and things. Generally it's on a 6 amp breaker. Uh, this is actually a 2.5 twin earth and you can see how big that is. But running 12 volt on a one mil twin earth kind of doesn't feel right to me. Obviously, 6 amp, 12 volts, is 72 watts, so you've got to be careful what LED lamps you put in. So he obviously he's, he's used um, his common sense and he's put low low wattage LED lamps in, uh, him being an electrician as well. Um, but my concern is, obviously, the way we wire our houses in the UK, or the way it is wired at currently, especially my property, um, leads me to think there's going to be lots of losses and obviously I don't know what his property looks like but he measured the voltage at the last light and he got 12.1 volts so there is going to be losses in the cable because uh, the way we run things so I'm just going to take you to my uh, little sketch of a kitchen and uh, we're going to draw some wires on it oh, okay now this is my little drawing of a uh, uh, small house and uh, we're just going to take it that there's four rooms in this house and they're not in any particular order and um, we're going to say there's one lighting circuit for arguments purposes for argument purposes yes um, and fuse box and uh, now I can't quite see all of my drawing where's where is it yeah that do let's just put right okay right so fuse box is up there, the little square with the line for it. Um, we have one, two, three, four lights. We have 
This is bathroom with pull cord. This is kitchen with light switch. This is, say, dining room with a light switch. And we have this as uh, entrance room, sitting room, front room type area with a light switch. Um, so I'm just going to draw some lines on once I've got some pens. And uh, we're going to start with um, a live loop. So I don't even know if this pen works. Uh, it does, right? Okay, so we come from the fuse box, and as this as this is as as per most ninety nine percent of the houses in the UK are wired this way. Some people do it a different way, which we're not going to go into. So you're going to have a live coming from your fuse box and into the light. Obviously, this is wired in that twin cable, so it comes with other cables, other cores, and then we have. Another one coming out. I've drawn this badly. And then, obviously, we've got two more rooms. So we need two more loops. So it goes all the way down here. And then, last room to there. So, as we know, we're wiring it in the twin cable. So the twin cable comes with a neutral. So let's draw a neutral in. Neutral comes in, oh, it's quite a bit thicker. And then, as it's twin, a neutral comes out. Uh, just about. Mm. Okay, so all the lights in the house have a permanent life. In this case, and in most cases. Um, so that will stay on all the time. So what you do is you you, um, you keep all the lives together, all the positives together. So all these positives are together. So there's no way of switching them on. What you do instead is you take another one of those twins, one of these, down to the light switch. So one of these goes to the light switch. Find the right pin. So, here we go, there's our red. So that goes in one side of the light switch and comes out the other. In black. But, it's not neutral or negative anymore, is it? So, we have to sleeve it, obviously. But, in this case, we're just going to do that to show it's a switch live. So, if you imagine your first light, it goes from your fuse board all the way up to your light fitting. And then it goes all the way from your light fitting down to your switch. And then all the way back up the switch to the light to turn it on. So, in essence, there's going to be quite a loss in this, in this system. There might be, but there is better ways of doing it. But as it stands as, as a standard household, it's not going to be wired like that at all. So I'm just going to draw in these other ones. I think that'll do. So you, you can imagine, by the time your um, live conductor coming from your 12 volt supply goes all the way around your house and gets to the last light, it's going to travel all the way around your house, not only in a zigzag fashion, because obviously lights are in different places, uh, different rooms, so it's not going to have a straight run. For example, you could, uh, you could uh, quite easily, for this last light, come straight down there. And, that, and then you've cut out um, several several meters, possibly up to 10, 15 meters, depending on the size of your rooms, going around the houses to get to that last light. Um, I haven't worked out any resistances on, on this thing, but say you were drawing, and say say you had 10 watt lamps in each room, 10, 20, 30, 40 watts. If you had them on at the same time, what sort of heat and what sort of resistances you're gonna have in that cable? Obviously, copper cable has a, a set of resistance per uh, millimetre square per metre sort of thing, but there's going to be some resistance in this. But I was thinking, uh, would it be worthwhile doing linking this to a 12 volt system? I mean, there is no reason why you probably couldn't, um, say, have your batteries 
and it says, say you had lithium, and say you had a 24, 36 or 48 volt system, and, and send that voltage through your one mil, or, or 1.5 maybe, uh, and then in the light fitting, uh, say after it's been um, dropped down, uh, after it's been switched, so you've got your permanent live in a higher voltage and your switch leg in a higher voltage, then dropping the voltage down to 12 volts to do your 12 volt LEDs, knowing that 12 volt LED and CFL type lamps are more common than higher voltage ones in that respect. So I'd like to know what you think in the end of things. And uh, this video has probably gone on way too long and I probably could have explained it a lot better. My drawing is a little bit pants, but... Can you think of a better way of uh, using existing, existing wiring in an off-grid situation? Uh, I mean, the argument was put, why don't you put an inverter and just have it mains? But then, my worry is, if you have an inverter, how are you going to protect that circuit properly? Uh, I.e. RCD protection, or if you're in America, GFCIs and that sort of thing. In order to comply with, sort of, uh, I guess I'm biased with the... Um, electrical regulations in this country in respect to this but maybe there isn't some it's difficult so if I could have some sort of views to do with um, you, this is the first time you, you thought of doing this or the first time this is this idea has been put to you what do, what do you think obviously this is quite long-winded but in an end day it could work and it might be something that I try in the future, or might do some more investigation work into. So, anyway, thank you for watching my waffle, and I'll see you in my next video. Cheers.